Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, it's going to be another RC conversion for the Tamiya Mini for the Beauty, except this time we're going to use 3D printed parts. Alright, let's get started. Alright, these are the 3D printed parts that we need for the RC conversion. This is the top plate that will go on top of the chassis at the front of the car. This is the steering axle that will connect to the left and the right knuckle. And these two are the wheel rims that will connect to the knuckles. The tiny plastics here are retainers for the wheels. This is the bottom plate that is mounted underneath the chassis. It has a hole here for anchoring the left knuckle. And this long lever pulls the left knuckle to set the steering angle. The other end of the lever goes to a servo that is mounted via this servo mount. For this particular RC conversion, we need to use a Super 2 chassis and we need to modify it by cutting out the portion here which is demarcated by the white marker lines. So I'm going to use the Dreamer tool to cut out this portion here and also this portion here. I'm going to do that off camera and I'll be right back. I'm careful to keep this parameter here for the structure so it maintains the strength. Now the next step is to dream away the plastic inside. The, there's a groove and we need to get rid of that inner plastic. The reason for that is so that we could fit in this bearing not only from this side but also from the back. Alright, let's do that. Alright, this shot you can see I've removed the inner plastic. I also cut a hole here. For the other side, there's a similar opening here. Now all this will make perfect sense at a later stage of the build. By the way, these are the tools that I'm using. This is the cutting disc and this is the grinder for grinding the inner plastic. Now before we start the soldering work, we need to take the front shaft and reduce its length from 60mm to 52mm. This is the shortened shaft and we're going to use this. Alright, now we're going to solder all the parts together and I'm going to show you how to do this easily. First secure that shortened front shaft into the vice clamp, make sure it's vertical. Next grab one of the bearings from the mini for the BD chassis and put it onto the shaft. As you can see here, this is the correct clearance as it allows the bushing to sit nicely on top like so and the shaft does not extend past the recession. The soldering work is done in two parts. First, we will have to solder the bushing to the shaft. Once that's done, then we will place this piece of metal shaft on top and then we will solder it to the bushing and that will complete the T-joint. Now, before we solder the other T-joint, we've got to make sure we put in the washers, bearings and gear. Otherwise, we won't be able to put them in later on. Now, the way this Attachment is going into the chassis is via the opening here and here. Basically, the bearing will slide in from the inside here. And this other bearing can only slide in from the outside. Right, this is how it looks like when it's installed in the chassis. There should be no friction and very little slop. Now this bearing has an outer diameter of 15mm, inner diameter of 10mm and a thickness of 4mm. So the dimensions to search for this bearing is 15 by 10 by 4. Now I'm trying to fit it into the knuckle. To do that, I'm going to use this clamp. I found this nuts tightener in my toolbox, so I'm going to use this as a spacer. To protect the 3D printer plastic, I will use a piece of wood. Now that the bearing is forced all the way into the knuckle, next step is to attach the knuckle to the outer wheel rim. It's really tight and I do not want to risk cracking the center hub. So we need to file the surface now this is a temporary screw which I have attached to the wheel ring. 
in order to install the wheel rim to my rotary tool. And there we have it, after sanding, the knuckles go into the wheel rims easily and it free wheels nicely. The next step is to install the retainer into the cavity and use this screw to lock it in place. This will prevent the knuckle from slipping out of the wheel rim. We need to mount the top plate to the chassis. To do that, drill two holes onto the front cap of the chassis using a drill bit. And then we could use the screws to attach the top plate that's done and this is how the top plate looks like when painted in black to match the chassis. The two screws are slightly too long so I added washers. Alright, the next step is to mount the bottom plate to the underneath of the chassis. There are really two holes here on the chassis so we just have to line up the holes on the bottom plate with these two holes and then attach the screws. Alright, that's done and the next step is to grab the servo mount and install the servo to the mount via the two screws and then grab another screw to attach this servo mount to the chassis via the holes here. At this stage we will install the model and the gears and grease them thoroughly. And this is how the car looks like after we put on the model cap and the front cap. As I'm turning the rear wheels here, I'm checking the position of the front wheel shaft the shaft should be right in the middle, maintaining the same distance from the top pivot point and the bottom pivot point. From the side view here, you can see that I've added washers in order to lower the base plate to achieve that. Finally, we could install the wheels, and this is how they look like. I'm using 2mm screws. The silver one is a bit too long, so I did not fully tighten it. Make sure there's no excessive friction. and when I turn the rear wheels, the front wheels should move freely. The next step is to grab the steering axle that we have 3D printed and cut an opening here to make way for the body shell. Also grab the spacers that come with the Mini 4WD kit. These are the spare spacers since we have replaced them with the bearings here and here. The front part of the RRC conversion is now taking shape and as you can see the steering axle works perfectly. As the steering control is done by this servo here, we need to attach the last part of the build which is this long axle. It acts as a push-pull rod. One end has already been secured to the servo horn as you can see here. I'm using 1mm screw for that. Now let me attach it to the servo, like so. I will put in a servo screw here and the other end will be attached to the hole here at the neutral position it should steer in a straight line at this stage we have completed all of the mechanical portions of the RC conversion and as you can see the mechanical parts are working correctly Now off to the electronics portion. Now the components we require will be the brush ESC, the step up regulator and the receiver. We will have the one cell LiPo pack connected here that will provide 4.2 volts to both the speed controller as well as the step up. The step up will step up the 4.2 volts to 5 volts to power the receiver. Anything that is connected to the receiver such as the servo will be powered by the 5 volts coming from the step up. So as you can see the servo wires connect to here. This is the channel for steering and for the forward and backward control I'm using the elevator channel. Now you notice that for the wires going to the speed controller there are only two wires. This is because I've cut away the red wire. We do not need the red wire from the ESC or speed controller going to the receiver since the receiver is getting power from the step up. After all the hard work, the car is finally complete and this is how it looks like. We have the one cell LiPo pack together with the other electronics. Everything fits in, although it's a tight fit. Now let me show you the controls.
most difficult part of the build for me was trying to get the front wheels to center perfectly when the stick is returned to the neutral position. To achieve that, I swap out the blue servo which I was using previously with this Hobby King digital servo. Before that, I even tried to use a micro servo which I have taken out from the RC helicopter's tail and that didn't work as well. Among the Mini 4WD cars which I had converted to radio control, this is considered a high performance one as it has the Plasma Dash model which is the most powerful model produced by Tamiya for its track cars. And here I'm using the 10 amps ESC which I featured in my previous video. It also has the 3.5 to 1 ratio high speed gears inside to give it that extra speed. To match this high performance car, I decided to use a Vanquish body shell. The Vanquish is my first childhood track car. And I had to cut the shocks, the fake shocks in front to make room so that it will fit in. Now we need this clip to attach this to the chassis but the clip will not be able to fit in through this gap here, it's too small. Fortunately I had a solution, there's this 3D printed part here which I came up with, let me show you how this works. First I have to remove the wing from the body shell. Next I'll put on the body shell like so. Without the wing, we could have a clear view and I will be able to put this inside like so so you can see the camera I'm going to push it in from the side now it's inside and I will twist it and it's locked it works the same like this thing with the twisting motion now that the body shell is secure, we could put on the wing. And that's done. Alright, enough talking, let's take this out for a spin and see how well it performs.